comes to light. <laughs> I told Ryan that while there perhaps was a precedent set by the Ethiopian eunuch, but in his excitement to receive the truth of the prophecy from Isaiah that was being delivered to him, that he wanted to find some water and be baptized now. <laughs> That's the way that uh, Ryan was as well. But I know that for the sake of what we have come to value so much in community, that for what baptism represents, it is a testimony, it is a declaration of receiving, confessing the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and receiving Him, submitting to Him as Lord, Lord being Master that we submit to him as his, uh, as his slave, as he receives us as heirs. It's one of those beautiful paradoxes uh, that I love about the gospel, is that while we come to him in a similar fashion to the prodigal son who has come to a recognition of his depravity, having squandered his inheritance, feasted with the pigs, and then recognize, what am I doing here because even my father's servants live better than I do right now. And that I'm going to go back and ask him for his mercy and see if he'll at least let me be a slave in his household. So upon that approach, the father shames himself by lifting his robes and runs to his son and welcomes him home, puts the robe around him and puts a ring on his finger. <laughs> And calls him son once again. Amen. And that this is the picture of the gospel that we come to the Lord functionally and in humility as a slave, giving up all of our rights and recognition of the debt that we owe and of the privilege that it is, of the holiness of the one whom we are approaching, recognizing that we have not even a place in his presence. And yet, the promise is that He receives us by His grace with an honor that we don't deserve. And that's why it's good news. We deserve death and destruction. But because of His mercy, because of the sacrifice of what He did for us, then we can be called heir. We can, while we approach Him in fear, we can know that, that it, it's that it's not going to end up in our total destruction. It will result in our death. <laughs> and that, that, that was the fear in the Old Testament that in coming before the presence of God, it would mean that you die. And hence the significance of baptism because, and also the significance of the cross. That the cross uh, is a form of torture and of death that is alien to our society. And I'm praising the Lord for... Mel Gibson and his creativity Amen. that at least gave us a, a window into what it may have looked like and may have been like. The horror, the absolute unthinkable suffering that he accepted upon himself. It's not only that he came to the earth being God as a man, as if that wasn't horrible and humble enough and the depravity of this world, but he came as the lowliest of men in poverty, in homelessness, and then not only death to pay the penalty for what we owe, but the lowest and the most horrible of deaths. So that no man can say anything, no man has any excuse, no man can say that our Lord doesn't understand. For even He was made perfect through suffering. Because He had never known it before. And yet He took that because of His love, that is the demonstration of His love, and the love that He calls us to for our neighbors. He bids us, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, to come and die. As He says, take up your cross and follow Me. 
This cross that we have an understanding of now is an instrument of suffering and of shame. To put to death this that is mortal and this that is corrupt. So that we can be buried with Him and baptized and raised again to new life. That is the significance of this ceremony. And it's not just similar to uh, communion, to that breaking of bread together, to this Holy Supper that we share. That there is a mystery to it, a presence, a spirituality to it that invokes a, a communion together and a communion with Him. And it's through Him that we have the communion together. That there in this ceremony is a, is a spirituality about it. That in this confession, in this testimony, it proclaims like a marriage that let it be so, that this is what it is. That we acknowledge that what has been done is. That in this proclamation and in this testimony, that our brothers are who they, who Christ says that they are in the agreement that they are professing today. And what I want you know, as a community and in, in also characteristic of the tradition uh, is for all of us to gather around them and to lay our hands on them. And though they, they have the Holy Spirit, we'll pray in the acknowledgement of, uh, that they have the Holy Spirit and that He fall on them now. And then we'll follow that uh, with their testimony through baptism. So let's, you guys, let's uh, move up here and everyone gather around them. And as you feel led, pray for them and then I'll close this out in prayer. Thank you for Ryan and Tyler, Lord, that the old has gone to me. That's exactly what I was just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I just Lord. said the old has passed away. The Lord is present. Oh, That's amen. awesome. I love you, Lord, how you repeat yourself to us. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lord, that confirmation. So, um, I just pray that when they both come up out of the water, that they know in their hearts, in their spiritual hearts, and I also saw uh, like a downturn, downturn smile, like a frown, and then it, it became a uh, smile up, turned his frown upside down. Even just at how amazing, how wonderful, it's joy that we can celebrate both something so morbid, but something mm. that like from ashes rises. Yeah. <laughs> like a phoenix. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord, that from our death, you raise life. Amen. And that is the promise that regardless of how hopeless we are apart from you, that in you, you have made the way for hope and honor in respect, in power, in authority that you bestow on us. And we pray now, fall on us, Holy Amen. Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Fill these men up as they declare their death, that they may be raised to new life and give them that new life. That from their confession that they are sinful and lost without you, that they also declare in you, I am found and I am raised to new life and that life is you, Christ. That there is no longer anything apart from you that I would hold to, that I give you all. Lord, make them new as you have been making them new and blessing us through them. From the bondage from which you are setting them free like we've been praying over Ryan and, uh, and Tyler in his, in his innocence and in his purity and his love and the wonder that I see in his eyes that is so encouraging that he has that gift of hope 
as he desires your glory above all things. And we pray that you continue to mold them, make them, and use them according to their role in the body, and that you would give us eyes to see and be your hands that would help in that shaping. Thank you for this celebration, and we now give it to you for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. I think we're going to need to raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually tried that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did that after I grabbed his arm. I was... I was... You know. <laughs> I know it's wrong. Somebody coming? Come on, Tyler. Don't be shy. All right. You're gonna get any warmer. You might have to go way out there to the middle. It's warmer out there. I think the dunker needs to be dunked. Yeah, make sure he goes under too. Oh, Glory! Yes! And uh, take this other hand. And then I'm going to use this and I'm going to dunk you under and bring you right back up. So just take your breath. Tyler, have you confessed your sins and received Jesus as your Savior? He said yes, sir. <laughs> He's shivering a little bit. I don't know that's cold or the Holy Spirit. And do you submit to Jesus Christ as your Lord to live for Him and nothing else or no one else until you meet Him in paradise? Yes. And as my brother, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with baptism and death, and raised a new life. As a light in the darkness, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yes! Hallelujah. Praise Him. Yes, Lord. Amen. I got it. Welcome home, baby. Welcome home. Ryan, do you accept and uh, confess your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. And do you submit to Jesus Christ as your Lord to live for Him and only Him and no one and nothing else as long as you live and until you meet Him in paradise? Yes. And now as my brother, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried with baptism and death, and raised with Him in new life. Now go filled with His light into the darkness, and spread the good news of that gospel from which you are a testimony. In Jesus' name, Amen.